So reports say that the new Nintendo Switch Pro is going to have deep learning super sampling, something that we thought was only going to be limited to the RTX cards. And speaking of RTX cards, did you guys hear uh, about those stock issues actually going on with the 3000 series GPUs? Well, it's only gotten worse since, and this report is actually coming from PC Gamer. More on that very soon. I am Francisco, and welcome to episode number 38 of the Tech Summit podcast. And I'm Chris. Yes, welcome in. Uh, he is still here remotely, but he's always here in my heart as well. So nonetheless, let's get right into the news. That's right. And of course, if you guys are watching on YouTube, all of that social media will be at the bottom of the video. Indeed, indeed. I'm going to do the pointing for now. And uh, yeah, I think we're pretty much re ready to get going. And as per usual, I think we've actually got some updates regarding the... And if suit. you're listening on other platforms... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you. You always do a much better job at this than I do. But yes, go ahead. If, if you're listening... On other platforms, you make sure to check out the description, of course. Man, there's just so much to keep track of. But please, yes, do make sure it's to check that out. It's funny, because I don't like doing plugs, and yet I'm the one that <laughs> tends to remember to do them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I got to give it to you. I think you got a a talent that you don't necessarily want. <laughs> even even residing from parts unknown, I'm still doing this. <laughs> sure thing. All right. Sure thing. So... Real quick, stock scoop. We're going to make this quick. There's not a whole lot to report on today. Uh, GameStop is once again trending downwards. As we are currently speaking, it is at $187 per share. That's down seven for today. Um, AMC has also trended downwards. It's at 1087. That's about $1.63 below uh, opening. Wow. Okay. Uh, so both of them have been trending downwards so far throughout this week. Hmm. Uh, GameStop might get a bit of a boost, however, because, as always, again, revealing the curtain, we are recording this on Tuesday afternoon, and Tuesday night we are going to be getting the uh, quarterly reports or earnings call from GameStop, which can skyrocket or further plummet the stock. AMC had theirs a few weeks ago, and the stock went up pretty darn well as a result of it. So, you know, that could be, like, something that we see. Yeah, this could be a pretty um, critical moment, actually, for GameStop. It could be. Possibly. We well, don't know. It is worth noting. I, I, honestly, I don't expect there to be much change at all. Fair. Though, like, it is worth noting, it is pretty crazy how GameStop was not nearly worth uh, as much as it is now. And still, like, like right now, where it's at, it is kind of considered to be low, just considering where it used to be even just a little while ago and how it's gone down due to, uh, uh, you, you know, like, short stopping, I think is, is what yeah. it's called. Uh, but, yeah, like, it is pretty insane that GameStop stock yeah, is not worth as much as it is. Even still, one of the more interesting things to me is the recent reports about what's going on with Discord. Because um, Discord is currently privately owned. Um, excuse me one second. Sure, sure. No yes. problem. <laughs> Discord ahead. is privately owned. And as reported by Bloomberg, uh, Discord has been looking around to possibly, you know, be bought out. You know, they've been looking at potential buyers or as well looking at the option of going public. And, you know, obviously, if they go public, that means, you know, us regular retail investors can buy shares of Discord. Now, one of the things that everyone was really focusing on when it came out of that Bloomberg article is that they meant that, you know, the people from Discord mentioned in like one or two sentences, oh, we were also kind of talking to Microsoft. And so everyone's immediately focusing in more on just, oh my God, is Microsoft going to buy Discord? <laughs> you know, that is kind of the big clickbaity title that everyone's focusing on. Right. But I and a couple of others do think it's more likely that Discord goes public, in which case, again, we could end up looking into buying shares of Discord. Or the ultimate plot twist, uh, Discord is actually looking at, into buying Microsoft. How does that sound? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the rumor is that if Microsoft is looking to buy Discord, it would be for $10 billion. 
Um, that's quite a bit of money, yeah. It is. And, of course, a lot of people are hoping that that's not going to happen because everyone's thinking about how Microsoft bought Skype all those years ago and mm-hmm. Skype lost its relevancy as a result. Um, I don't think that's the only reason why. I'm sure there are just, like, a lot of reasons to it, such as, you know, competition arising, just, like, better competitors, like Curse Voice uh, some time ago, even though they're not really a thing anymore, and now Discord. There, there is there is plenty of reasons. There are plenty of reasons. One of the ones that the, the one that people always tend to look back on is Skype. Um, frankly, again, I don't think that Microsoft is going to buy Discord. I think it's more likely that Discord goes public. Um, and even if it turns out that Microsoft is going to buy Discord, I would much rather they do it than say Facebook. Who I don't would probably be the most likely uh, case. Like, do correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that Discord is available on either of the consoles, right? Like on either uh, the PlayStation Five or the Xbox Series X, right? Like, it's never. Been... I don't think it is, but I'll double check. Okay, yeah, because um, I mean, if that were the case, like that would be a pretty uh, sick opportunity for Microsoft to kind of make Discord uh, an Xbox ex- exclusive thing. So, so that in case. Uh, Sony ever wanted to put Discord on the PlayStation 5, they can't anymore, which would be pretty hilarious. But also, I wouldn't like that because uh, I have a PS5, not an Xbox, but yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much uh, my take on that. What's up? Okay, so I'm, I'm getting mixed signals here. Okay. Uh, apparently, there is like integration with Microsoft Xbox accounts for it. And I think there's workarounds to get Discord working on PS5 for chat. But officially speaking, it doesn't look like it's available on either. Oh, okay. Got it. So, like, th- th- there's still some fighting ground there. Uh, a I- little bit, but, yeah, I think Discord would absolutely be prioritized specifically as a PC app. And, you know, Microsoft has been encroaching a lot on that PC gaming sphere, so. Yes. They've been In very case, pro-consumer for a while. Exactly. In any case, that is really the end of the stock scoop. That's right. And now we're ready to move on to actually some rather exciting topics here. So according to this article from The Verge and actually many others, because you also were referencing one from Bloomberg earlier, the one that I'm reading in particular is by Sam uh, Byford. I hope that I pronounced that correctly uh, over at The Verge again. And it is titled, OLED Nintendo Switch reportedly uses new NVIDIA chip with deep learning super sampling support. Which, in and of itself, is pretty insane. However, this is a great way, in my opinion, like, just already, of making it so that uh, you could run more demanding games on the Switch without necessarily having to go with such a hardware bump, necessarily. Like... I think that this is something that could work out very well, and it is an advantage that NVIDIA has at this moment, even though I know that that AMD does have, like, an alternative to it. Deep learning super sampling has been a thing for a, a, a little bit longer, so there's that advantage, and if it's coming to the Switch, I think those are fantastic news. And already, like, it's already uh, even being confirmed that it is going to have an OLED screen, which sounds amazing to me. <laughs> yes, so... Um, I, again, I'm looking at Bloomberg. Specifically, I'm also looking at uh, a Bloomberg reporter who was uh, putting some uh, you know, bullet points on Twitter about this. And uh, they also confirm, at least according to the rumors and the sources of multiple people they've been speaking to, uh, again, 7-inch, 720p OLED screen, as you mentioned, deep learning, super sampling, uh, a better CPU with more memory, um, and a price tag around 400 I knew it. I knew it. Well, it, they, it they, also, they also put with a lot of games, but I feel like that's an empty, <laughs> it's kind of an empty <laughs> claim there. Yeah, yeah. It's and, like, what do you define as a lot of games? Do you mean a lot of games that are going to be debuting and launching with it, or just access to a bunch of games that are already available on Switch, you know? Yeah, that, that, that is true. I guess that right now that could just be up to interpretation. I mean, the first thing that I thought, like right off the bat, it, is just that, uh, like, for some reason, the Switch was just going to come preloaded with, like, a bunch of shovelware titles that's all, uh, that are already on the eShop that often go on sale for, like, one one fifty or something. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just imagine that. 
but I was uh, thinking I was thinking more that it would just be coming preloaded with Mario Kart or something. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I, I mean, it could have come with with a bundle of sorts where like it could actually come with Mario Kart. I mean, like the 3DS, uh, they were doing that with the uh, 2DS, actually. My yeah. mistake. Yeah. Like with the 2DS, like how they were bundling that with Mario Kart. And they've actually already done like some bundles with uh, with other games like Super Mario Odyssey and things like that. So, yeah, I mean, like I could see that happening. Those models probably costing a little bit more, to be completely honest. But I really do think that the Switch Pro is going to end up costing four hundred bucks. And like, honestly, if it's having what, like, if they're touting the features that they're claiming, I don't think four hundred is completely out of the question. Assuming that the regular Switch model remains in production at three hundred, which is also something that is still up for debate, because Nvidia and Nintendo did confirm. Uh, that the original chips for for the Switch are getting discontinued. That's where it gets a little dicey. Yeah, like like if they really leave us only with the Switch Pro and the Switch Lite, then we're gonna have a bit of a problem. Yeah, I, I think that the only way that the Switch Pro would end up being cheaper is if for some reason, yeah, uh, like they just decide that their mainline Switch is now just going to be. Uh, the Switch Pro, and then you're just going to have the Switch Lite, right? And then in that case, maybe I can see them dropping the price down a bit to like 350 at best. But I don't think that by any means it is going to end up costing 300 I, I, I just think that considering that this is going to be an upgraded version of the Switch, while I don't think that it's going to necessarily be replacing it, just the fact that these ships got discontinued, uh, it does give off the impression that these may not continue to be manufactured necessarily, but they could still be even developing a different uh, chip to continue to make these models, just like with a different chipset, I, I guess, that maybe just doesn't catch up to the Nintendo Switch Pro when that comes out, but something that is still on that $300 price tag or price range. Right. Yeah, but then again, like it, this is all speculation. Exactly, it is, we, we still have no official confirmation. It's just that the rumors are getting louder and a bit more concrete. Is yeah, this is what it comes down to. Way now, more than it was like back in 2018. Exact, exact, or even just a couple weeks ago, honestly. Yeah, yeah, I, I can agree. Like, with we, you like we spoke about this a couple weeks ago or so, and it's like even now it feels like more credible rumors because. We're getting these reports, you know, Bloomberg and The Verge are reporting on it. Yeah. Um, I mean, the only problem, of course, there's another problem, too. And it's, as mentioned, uh, we have NVIDIA working on the chips here. <laughs> uh, deep learning super sampling, which means that more than likely, these are completely new chips. These are not, like, existing chips. No, 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 yeah, totally. Like, this is these a are brand new, new chip. Chips. Yeah, being, being developed specifically for the Switch Pro. Which, of course, and I, and I realize this feels like an early transition to the next subject, but we'll we'll get we'll get to, we'll, get to, we'll get there. I swear. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you may as well get that button going now. Yep, I I already uh, have my finger on it. Don't worry. But you know, there is almost no doubt that we are going to run into a very quick, very extreme and brutal shortage of the chips and the system in response um you're not gonna see this console this year i don't think wow just uh sad rumors or sad specu uh, speculative uh thoughts coming from christopher over here uh from the tech summit podcast <laughs> specifically episode number 38 but I'm Chris. <laughs> Hello. Now, I do think that we are going to see the Switch this year. Because if there was a year to bring in like a mid-generation jump, it would be now. It, it has already been four years since the original Switch came out. So I should be clear. When I say we're not seeing it this year, I don't mean that they're not going to release it this year. I mean that they'll release it this year, but you're not going to see. You are not going to see one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. That is what I mean. It is being scalped. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Like, bots are just going to get to it. Yeah. It is absolutely being scalped. And then the shortage that we're already running into with NVIDIA and, you know, 
chips and all that stuff is just going to compound on it. I think you're absolutely right. I'm gonna, it is the next logical step. I'm going to try my hardest to get my hands on one, not only for review purposes, but also because I do want one. Um, and I, oh man, <laughs> like, is the only way to get one going to be through bots? I wonder. I don't want to have to rely on something like that for a product that should just be available to whoever can afford it. Ah. I'm, I'm wagering. I'm wagering you are going to be having to use a bot or show up somewhere. <laughs> Or might just have think... to uh, go back to my good old friend of me, eBay, again. But let, let's hope that. that's not the case. Yeah. Do it... not do that. Um, and, of course, I suppose to put a little bit of a lid on these uh, Switch Pro Talks, I suppose. Because I'm guessing you're you're itching to move to the next part of the NVIDIA Shame Corner. Not not necessarily, actually. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, like, considering that this is, uh, like, there's still quite a bit that can be talked about regarding this Nintendo Switch Pro. Because... It's just a lot of excitement coming from it. It is getting hyped up pretty hard. And like yes. now, like just imagine that all of this just came uh, crumbling at the end when it finally gets announced. And it it just turns out to be like a battery life upgrade. And it's only like the OLED screen being introduced. <laughs> I don't think so. The, the fact that we're getting these kinds of reports from places like Bloomberg makes me think that we'll say at least two or three of these things are going to be true. It is more credible than just hearing it from, let's say, like a... Like, a this Reddit, isn't a 4 chan post, you know, it's... Right, like, it's not just a subreddit or anything like that. These are, like, journalists, publications actually going out and, and reporting on these things. Exactly, these are extremely credible publications. You know, this Bloomberg, Bloomberg is very serious. Yeah. You know, it's not like, it's not like Switch Joy-Cons with a Z, you know, some <laughs> bootleg Nintendo rumor site. Yeah. Although, it, like, funnily it, enough, like, now that you mention that, uh, it, in these articles, I tend to, like, not bring this up, but I usually do notice, like, typos somewhere, and I'm like, huh, so, so nobody proofread this. And it does happen even on, like, the best of publications, <laughs> but that has nothing to do with their, with their credibility, per se. <laughs> it was just you're, you're, like you're, 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 you're getting ready to say something. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> Don't they worry. They made a typo, it. didn't they? Uh, none that I've noticed so far. It's just something that I've expected to see. And this one doesn't have any typos as far as I've oh. seen. So I believe them even more now. <laughs> okay. I, I will say, though. Yes. On that, on the note of my little joke there. Um, there's been no n mentions whatsoever about, like, improved Joy-Cons. And that is disappointing a little bit. Uh, like, I want to say that it comes with the territory. Like, we should expect it anyway. Like, no, I don't think you should expect it at all at this point. Uh, I fully expect the new switches to come out, and then within a week or two, you're going to have articles from like Kotaku, The Verge, other places just saying Joy Con Drift is still a thing. <laughs> I fully expect nothing to have changed with that. Probably so. I do at least want like some upgraded Joy Cons, like the thumbsticks. I would like it if maybe they, they had a little bit more resistance on them. That would be nice. I would also like a little bit more more distance between uh, that uh, that left joystick and that minus button because sometimes when I'm playing Persona 5 Strikers and I'm trying to look at the map, I end up tapping that stick by accident, and that's been happening a lot more frequently with that game. So, you know, that, that would be nice. And also, I do wonder if they are going to keep that uh, four-way directional pad or if they're going to give us a D-pad. I think that's still up for debate. Right. Someone also pointed out that while deep learning super sampling would be a big deal for the Switch Pro, um, we should not expect, you know, already released Switch games to suddenly like perform way better on the Switch Pro. That that would have to be patched in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do and expect that to be the case too. Yeah, and Nintendo's, you know, post launch support tends to be pretty poor. Like one person's pointing out that oh man, Xenoblade runs really badly portably, which I'm not actually sure yet. I haven't played the game yet. Can you confirm that? Or uh, I mean, I disagree. Like, I haven't re really like come across into any kind of issues like that. I think that it runs just fine portably, but I mostly play it. Apparently, like the resolution is really bad. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I will say it's not nearly as bad as it was back in the 3DS. Like when we saw that game coming, 
to to the new 3ds it looked like absolute garbage it looked like total <laughs> so like i i would not expect uh too much necessarily of an upgrade for, from the switch but it still doesn't look nearly as bad as, as it did back then like in 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 handheld and plus like xenoblade chronicles 2 in handheld still didn't really look all that great it still ran at, uh, at less than 720p for sure especially like in the middle of certain combination attacks and things like that so mm. like i think that is pretty common honestly like with the switch and a lot of uh non mario games <laughs> plus zelda i, I, I mean it, it like but yeah the the end thing is just that that you're assuming that all of the pa the previous games will get patched up for you know added performance the same way that a lot of ps4 titles are mm -hmm. for ps5 like that's a, that's a very nice thing to assume and in an ideal world that's what would happen but nintendo was going to nintendo so yeah, yeah, N Nintendo is indeed going to do that. Like, if anything, maybe we can expect, like, uh, I don't know, like a new first-party Nintendo in-house game to come out alongside this Nintendo Switch Pro to really, like, show off the prowess of this beautiful I'm going to laugh game. if it's Xenoblade 3. <laughs> <laughs> if, if it's a Xenoblade 3, I'm going to be very happy, actually. <laughs> actually I mean, actually, no, Xenoblade X is one of the uh, few Switch uh, Wii U games that have not been ported over yet, right? Yeah, uh, and it, it was actually rumored some time ago, but instead we ended up getting uh, Chronicles, which I actually kind of prefer o over I X. I think most people are happy that they got Chronicles over X, but I could totally see X being ported over now, and that would be a... I remember the landscapes being pretty big, so, you know, it's a, it is a Xenoblade game, so... Yeah, but it was, like, very different from Xenoblade, period. Right, I'm just thinking, like, visually speaking, that could be a decent title for, like, the Switch Pro's you know mm -hmm. display the power of the switch pro or something like that sure or maybe maybe just maybe uh we get some kind of demo of uh breath of the wild 2 I i'm gonna laugh if they do it like <laughs> what they did with metal gear solid 2 way back in the day where it's like you get xenoblade x and then they include a demo of breath of the wild 2 on it <laughs> it's like a demo <laughs> <cartridge>. everyone's <laughs> buying it for the demo <laughs> yeah, this is the just like what they did it. with metal gear 2 and zone of the enders <laughs> that's hilarious I, I, I'm not saying that I would love it if that were the case, Beaky, because that, that would be a little bit of a deal. It would work. <laughs> it would work, yeah, but, like, still, it would be, like, such a uh, move on their end. <laughs> Again, Konami did it. It worked. I guess. You know, you get, you get a demo for a game that you're super excited for, and you get a pretty decent game along with it. I guess. <laughs> now, so, what of the end was good. What? Zone of the Enders was good. Oh, well, I mean, I don't really know too much about that game, so please, mm. by all means, go ahead. Educate us. No, it was, an, it was a mech game. It was like a mech combat game. Mech combat? Like, uh, like, like giant mechs? Or, like, are we talking yeah, Gundam? It was, like, it was like a, almost like flying, not Gundam, not really Gundam, more like just flying around in these mech suits. So, like Anthem? No, a little more than that. Uh, actually, probably like uh, I'm, I'm sure if you know the Switch, Switch title because it came out a while back and no one cared about it. Damon X Machina. I do remember, it, yes, and I played. Yeah, yeah, like before. that. Mm -hmm. it, it was, it was like that. It's such a shame too, because like that game looked so, so pretty. Like the art style was so nice, but it ran badly on it, the Switch. It did, it did. That that would need a patch. That needs a patch for the Switch Pro. Yeah, who knows? Like, maybe we get a ma uh, like a remaster for the Switch Pro or something like that. And that ends up just being a patch fix. And that, that's all, all, all that it really is. It just supports <laughs> deep learning super sampling now, guys. Yay. That, that fixes the game a lot, though, <laughs> wouldn't it? It would, but, like, imagine them just reselling the game <laughs> like that. <laughs> to me, I mean, the game is still like, like sixty dollars. Not like the price went down, did it? Yeah, but like, what? What if you paid sixty dollars already for the game, and now like, if you actually want to play it because you weren't able to? Oh, before, that's what you mean. Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking that it's just a free patch, and then they just release the the, the game again with the free patch. No, 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 for no. People no, who no, didn't no, buy it already. That's giving these companies way too much credit. Okay, only CD Projekt Red has the audacity to. Uh, to announce such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Give yourself the button. Yeah, there you go. Aha! Finally. Thank you. 
And I remembered that it was that cyan button. It always is. But now I do think it's about time that we moved on to our next topic because it is still in video related. So I'm just going, going to go ahead and press that button. As it has to do with NVIDIA stock. Uh, and it seems like things are really only getting worse in spite of time, you know, passing. Because uh, all of us had been going on and saying, you know, like with time, we should be seeing a lot more of these GPUs like coming about. These should become more, more accessible we've been saying this ever since september october november december we thought january february well at least february would be the month where we started seeing more stock of these but it's been just as bad if not worse and if anything actually according to this article it's only been worse so this article uh from pc gamer written by actually we've uh we've got two authors here and this is by dave james and jacob ridley and it's called the best graphics cards in 2021 uh, however, this just this does very much insinuate that there are going to be a lot of issues uh, actually coming down to the the stock in particular. Or did I actually click on the wrong one? Hang on, hang on. Uh -oh. <laughs> I think I think I may have actually done so. Hang on, hang, uh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I found it. Uh, so this is there we go. Shortage isn't improving. Nvidia <laughs> shortage is improving. So this is a totally different article from PC Gamer. My apologies there, but this is still written by Dave James. This is only one author. My apologies at the beginning. I am so sorry. Uh, so here it says, do you want the good news or the bad news first? I'm going to make the call for you, my uh, rhetorical friend. The bad news is that Nvidia's GPU supply will continue to be royally screwed. A suddenly more now phrase uh throughout the rest of, of the year uh digit times yeah yeah digit times via uh sweet clockers is reporting that despite nvidia's own hints that the contrary the graphics card shortage isn't going to be eased by q3 this year so that means that it could take longer for people to actually get their graphics cards and this is just really, really bad news because I still, I still know people that need an upgrade, pretty bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is truly a shame. Um, now, why this is happening? It is because obviously the increasing demand and Nvidia not really meeting uh, the demand with their own supply, but things are just getting worse. So at this point, my, my advice to people is really just going to be, if you really need an upgrade right now, get what you can within reason. So um, I'm going to obviously say don't feed into the scalpers whatsoever. Uh, if you need an upgrade, um, I am really sorry. Check with local stores because there's a lot of times where local electronic stores will get stock of these things, but no one looks thinks to check about them because they just assume that they won't get them. Um, if you do live within any sort of when any sort of like vicinity of a micro center, even if it's driving, try to go down to one and see if they'll have stock coming in soon. And if they do, try to show up like an hour before opening. You know. Um, I I was actually at a micro center uh, a couple of days ago for the first time. I went there at around like mid afternoon to evening, almost. Mm. Uh, like they're still well, uh, well past opening. Um, and I took a look at the GPU section, and the only graphics cards that they had, and I kid you not, were the GT 1030. No GT 1010s, mm. but GT 1030. Uh, and they also had. GT 710s. <laughs> That's all that they had. And like they just have like a massive like display case. It's like a glass uh uh like display sliding door thing for it. And there were so few boxes in there. The only boxes in there were only for GT 1030s and GT 10 uh, uh GT 710s, which is just so sad. My cousin even said, look. I'm in such a need for an upgrade at this point that if I find a 3080 right now, like if I happen to come across one, I will get that card immediately on the spot. So I would, just, I'm just trying to dissuade people from scalpers as much as possible because by feeding into the market like that, you only just give them more reason to continue doing it. You know? Yeah, that's like very I'm, true. I'm, 
I understand the desperate. Here's my personal opinion. Yeah, yeah. The only reason why you should feed into a scalper to get these things, the only reason, and no, Francisco, you are not part of this. <laughs> well, go is on. If, is if the card is necessary for your work and the card that you currently have is broken or severely below the means that you need to complete that work. Actually, I will have you know that that 2080 was not meeting uh, my requirements for work. It was passable, you, but it was slowing you, me down considerably. You know, you're still passable. I'm talking, see, the scenario that I'm talking about right now is someone who has to work from home and, like, their entire job and income is based upon having a suitable card, and the card that they have is, like, a GT 1030 that can't do it. Ah, come on. That's, That's what I'm, like... talking, like, I'm talking about, like, going from a really bad, cheapo pre-built to something that can actually do, like, video editing or 3D stuff or whatever it may be. Like, those as the only situation. Like, if you getting this card determines if you can pay rent or not... I mean, then that's me. It makes sense. Like, if it, if if it, if if getting this card means that you can get <laughs> sixty plus thousand dollars a year salary, then fine. Okay, go well, to the scalper or whatever. But well, I guess that uh, by your own standards, I, I'm there. This, I'm making <laughs> this as limited. I'm making these conditions as limited and strict as possible to eliminate most circumstances of giving into scalpers. Please. Do not give in to scalpers. You are going to feed their market. They are going to continue to do this because they know that people are going to buy into it. Resist. I understand. Like, it, straight up. If the primary point of, of getting the card is for video games, do not. No, don't. 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 It is don't. not worth it. Do not do it. Completely agree. It is not that important. Yep. Absolutely. Okay, it's not that important. Yes, realistically Unless you're speaking, making it's only money. for gaming. Unless you are making money from playing games, like, you know, Twitch stream and stuff like that. Unless you're making money, and again, go back to the previous thing. How big is the salary and how much of a difference is it making? Then we can talk about it. But otherwise, if you just want the new card so you can play Cyberpunk, don't do it yet. Cyberpunk is still not fully patched. Yeah. It's definitely not worth it for that. And honestly, like, when it eventually gets patched and fixed and all of that jazz, you won't even need a 3090 to get good performance out of the game. You could get... Just just pay the $10 a month for GeForce now. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Play it there. <laughs> you could do that. Uh, it's not a Game Pass yet, is it? No. No? Okay, then yeah. GeForce Now is the best way to go. So you can still buy the game if you want and then uh, just go with GeForce Now in that sense. And you can still get... Some very nice performance out of it. Or Stadia, if you are interested in Google Stadia. The dying instead. throes of Stadia. <laughs> Correct. Correct. But yeah. But yeah, no, the stock issue is definitely going to be continually getting worse. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly don't think they should even discuss the idea of any super cards this year. I really I mean, 4, don't think so either. No, 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 no. I don't no. want to hear it. Same yeah. thing next year. I don't want to hear it either. With how much trouble they've been having with these cards, I feel like they should delay every like, all of their future plans for the next series of cards. They should push them back at least another year, if not more. And, like, uh, and I really actually, wouldn't mind. I, I really wouldn't mind that because, uh, I mean, like, huh? up, uh, upgrading a graphics card every two years, for example... Like, which is when NVIDIA technically re releases a whole new generation of graphics cards. Um, hasn't necessarily always been all that fruitful. Like, if you were upgrading from a 10 series graphics card uh, to now a 20 series graphics card, you're not going to see many big changes here. And you're probably paying extra. Now, from 20 series to 30 series, now we're looking at a much nicer upgrade for less. If you got your hands on uh, uh, on that card at the price that they were supposed to be sold at, that is. Um, you, nobody can get one, so, like... Yeah. I just feel like, instead of trying to talk about a Super or a 4000 series, just work on fixing the production for these current cards. I have them released and available without any talks of upgrades for this year and possibly all of next year. And then maybe in 2023, we can look at like a 4,000 series and who knows, 
by then, they'll probably have a much bigger performance leap and it can actually justify the price increase that they're naturally going to want to put on it. I can agree, yes. Uh, now, with that said, I would like to say thank you so much to all of you for jumping into tonight's episode of the Tech Summit Podcast. It has indeed been a blast. Uh, I want to say that we have had uh, some pretty cool topics, actually, to talk about. Now, it was a, a lot of it was very much NVIDIA themed, but yeah. Yeah, it is. And I, I know we kind of glossed a little bit over that sort of Discord stuff because, again, the big hot topic for a lot of people is the idea that Discord could be bought out by Microsoft. But again, or it could be the other way around. Extremely likely. <laughs> I don't see that as likely. I just see them being, you know, going public or something. I hope they don't get bought out by Facebook. That's for sure. Oh, no, you're absolutely hoping not. Uh, but with all of that said, I think that. Um, I think that things are still going to be pretty fruitful regarding the Switch. Obviously, we're going to see some shortages like we did with the original Switch back when there wasn't uh, any sort of... Um, oh, it's going to be way worse. Expect it to be like PS5 tier. PS5 tier? Or you think, yeah. Or you think that it's going to be that bad in terms of stock? Absolutely, especially <laughs> if they're launching a decent title with it, like a Breath of the Wild 2 or something. Absolutely. Or 3D Mario All-Stars Remaster. <laughs> Odyssey 2, yeah. Odyssey, yeah, Odyssey 2, I guess. Uh, or just bring in Super Mario Galaxy 2. How about that? Or you. Of course. <laughs> but if you guys are watching on YouTube, all of that social media will be down at the bottom of the video. And if you are listening in on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or everywhere else, all that information is in the respective descriptions. Of course. But until then, we'll be seeing you all. Good night. Travel well.